I more than doubled this e-commerce brand's organic search traffic and ranked them in the number one spot on Google over 200 times in just five months. And I did it with just three very simple SEO tactics and none of those included writing any blog content. Today, I'm gonna break down what those tactics were and what the results of this case study were. So let's get into it. So here is the brand. We started with them in November of 2025. Um, so five months ago, okay? Now in November of 2025, they were at 8,600, eight, eight, eight and a half thousand basically organic search visits a month. Okay. Now back it up, you can see that they're pretty much at that the whole time, right? Somewhere between like five and 10,000, pretty much at any given point over the last, uh, what is that? Like seven years, pretty much. Um, we started working with them, like I said, November 25 or never November 24, um, pretty much right before black Friday, we threw black couple of Black Friday um, collections up for them. They're a fitness brand. They crushed on Black Friday, which is sick. Um, but you can see pretty much right after we get started in November, goes vertical, okay? December, we do 10 and a half thousand. January, nearly 14. February, slight dip at 13 and a half. March, 14.3. April, we're now nearly at 21,000 organic searches a month, okay? So um, we definitely more than doubled it, um, nearly tripled. Um, 8,600. So yeah, like 25 and a half would have been like roughly triple. So I think we're gonna catch it at some point. Okay. Now the beauty of this is I actually didn't write a single blog. Okay. Um, I hate writing blogs. E-commerce brands don't really need as many blogs as they have been led to believe over the last couple of years with SEO. Um, yes, topical authority is important. Yes, I still believe in it. However, if you want to move the needle very quickly, like I did with this brand right here, blogs are not going to be your best friend. Okay. Now, as I said, all of this growth is not like thanks to blog traffic. I told you I didn't write any blogs. We updated a few of them, but these rankings I'm going to show you are not at all related to blogs. Okay. They're all primarily collection pages, right? So we have hit 21,000, nearly tripled their organic search revenue. We have more than doubled their organic search revenue in the same time frame, And I'm going to show you kind of three tactics we got into it. Okay. Um, optimizing collection pages, internal linking and backlink building. Okay. So let's get on. All right, so these are their organic keywords in the US, right? I'm just gonna run through US data because that's the biggest market. That's their biggest market. So uh, you guys can see, like I said, um, this is just US traffic here in November, about 6,500 in the US. Um, now we're at nearly 18,000, okay? So actually, if you look in the US market, we've actually more than tripled their organic search revenue. Um, and all of it is to transactional pages, like products and collections, okay? Which is sick, okay? They rank number one for lifting belt. They previously weren't even on page one. Weightlifting belt. Same thing, number one. Honestly, most of the keywords are around belts, okay? And this is actually a growing category. So we're, the volume continues to increase as we obviously add more keywords on this page. However, we're also benefiting from category growth. So like these search volumes for lifting belt, I know for a fact are higher now than they were in December, right? I think they were like maybe like seven or 8,000 in December, something like that. So now the fact that they're at 10,000 means we're actually getting more clicks on the same keyword, right? Now, this is what I talk about with SEO being a demand conversion channel. We rank number one. That's awesome. However, we can't grow the category just by ranking number one, right? You have to grow, you have to grow a category by spending more money on meta ads, you know, going viral, things of that nature. Okay. So good news is category is growing. And because we rank number one, we're cat, we're capitalizing on category growth. Okay. But I want to be clear, like we can't drive any more revenue than the number of people that search for it at a given time, right? Like we are limited theoretically by that ceiling of volume. Okay. Now. <clears throat> belts, obviously, like that's like most of the keywords. Okay, we have a few different belt pages. They had one when we first started. There now is like four or five. We basically built out a new belt collection for each type of kind of lifting. So it's like powerlifting, weightlifting. Um, and we have a CrossFit one. We've got an Olympic one. We've got lever, a non-lever one. I think we have a women's. We have a women's one. We have a men's one also. We rank number one for every single one of them. Okay, like it was so easy. We just like spun the copy up, internally to all of them, and here we are right number one okay um powerlifting gear is sick this is a pretty hard keyword this is actually their home page ranking right now they rank number one for this which is great um let's see what else i got here lift socks cool they rank number three for that we're gonna push that one they also have deadlift shoes position five i want to i want to capture this keyword here um this one right here deadlift shoes i want to get the number one here three thousand be obviously a nice boost here powerlifting supplies though position one so basically if you're a powerlifter and you want to buy shit online, uh, very good chance you're buying it from this brand, which is awesome. Okay. So I kind of already laid out the first two components of the strategy. First off, it was splitting collections out into like collections and sub collections, right? So they have a bunch of belts. 
they were all in one collection. However, there's a lot more belt keywords than just one. Okay. Now, if I just rank number one for like weightlifting belt, for example, or like lifting belt as an example, I'd only get 10,000, like, like a maximum of 9,900 visitors a month. However, I don't want to be theoretically limited at 10,000. I want to make more money for them, for the brand. So I want to bring in more visitors. So by stacking up more keywords on new collections, I was able to basically repackage their belts under different keywords, powerlifting, Olympic lifting, you know, women's, men's lever versus non-lever, all these kinds of things. Now we're starting to basically stack up different TAM. Like we're increasing our, our TAM by stacking up more keywords. Okay. I've tweeted about this before. Um, I think I had a LinkedIn post about it too. It's basically like the Moneyball approach to SEO. So if you guys have seen the movie Moneyball, the Oakland A's are trying to replace Giambi, Jason Giambi. They can't because they don't have the salary cap to do so because he was like a Hall of Famer. So basically they just recreate him in the aggregate is what they call it. Effectively what they've done is instead of trying to find one Jason Giambi for like a couple hundred million or whatever the salary was at the time, they basically find 10 or so different players that combine to make up the number of hits they'll have all year for a lesser cost. Okay. Now, this isn't a baseball company. I'm no MLB veteran here. However, basically what I did is I said, all right, we have this theoretical limit, our cap table of 9,900 9, visitors a month. However, that is probably like, if I rank them one for that keyword alone at their conversion rate, at the price they sell it at, probably wasn't gonna be enough to generate like a very, like a substantial enough ROI that they would be stoked about working with us. So. What I do, I found more opportunities. I went and found people to recreate or to create a bigger volume in the aggregate, basically. So now I'm, instead of just being 9,900 visitors a month, obviously you sell the volume, it's 21,000, right? In the US it's 18,000 almost, right? If I just bring number one for this, this number would be substantially lower. It'd be pretty much the same as it was back when they started in November, right? However, by stacking up these keywords, I have now added more potential volume than they ever thought existed, okay? Now they're making a lot more money as a result of it. Okay. So first kind of component I did first tactic, take your collections, split them out of sub collections, stack some more keywords, volume on top of yourself, like on top of the original and increase your TAM. Okay. That is step one. Step two. Now that you have all of these collections and sub collections, build internal links between them. Right. I've talked extensively about internal links. Um, I, did an audit on a watch brand. I talked about Gymshark on one of my recent videos. I've broken down literally how I do internal linking on dozens of my videos. I have a full video with like a mirror board and frameworks and all that kind of stuff. So if you haven't watched any of those videos, go watch them. I'm using the same internal linking that I use with those other websites. Okay. And like those case studies, you basically build internal links between all of your collections and sub collections in a cluster, similar to how you would do like a content silo for blog content, like on a niche site, as an example using exact match anchors. Now, basically I've clustered them all together. Now as one starts to rank higher, the other starts to rank higher as well, okay? And I just put these internal links like in the collection description. Super easy, super straightforward, nothing like complex or crazy or anything like that, right? Very, very simple, very easy to make happen, okay? I think they had like, so that, that was part two, okay? Part one, make sub collections. Part two, connect the dots with internal links. Part three, backlinks, okay? A lot of people are pretty conservative on their backlink building side of things, right? They only build, you know, homepage links. They build like branded homepage links. Totally fine. It's the safest way to do it, right? You build branded homepage links, 100%, like very unlikely you're going to get penalized. Um, and over the long run, if you have a long enough timeline available, you're going to be fine. Okay. Like if you've got a year to wait, two years to wait to rank number one, and you just want to build brand homepage links and distribute that equity throughout your sub pages, like your internal pages with internal links, you can do that. Okay. As an issue owner, I have to be a bit more aggressive because I don't have one or two years to prove my worth to a client. Okay. I really, in reality, have probably a few months. Um, I tell clients we'll see positive ROI within, you know, the first four to five, like three to five months, kind of really depending on the brand size. Um, that is possible, but it is only par possible because in part, I'm building more aggressive links to internal pages. Okay. So these collection pages that I mentioned, I built and built an internal links around. Not only did I build homepage branded anchors to build up the equity throughout the entire site, 
I also built a few internal, like a few link insertions to these internal collections, okay? And I really just built them to the main collection and then I used internal links to distribute that link equity to the sub collections. But basically, I think over the course of the last five months, I think we built like four or five backlinks to directly that collection page and we used natural and branded anchors, okay? So it was like brand plus lifting belt as an example, right? Um, and then we did, you know, just, um, you know, natural something. So like these powerlifting accessory thing, we like something like that, right? I don't remember the anchors, just these are examples, okay? And again, we balanced those out. So like we built five links to four or five links, let's say to that collection page. Over the last nine months, we've also got about like 15 or tw probably 15 to 20, maybe 25 to um, the homepage, right? And those are all branded, right? So I wasn't just being like, overly aggressive and totally irresponsible about this collection page, right? I know if I want to build backlinks to an internal page, I have to really balance it way out with homepage links, okay? If I build like all 20, 25 links to the collection page, I would probably rank number one like next week or two weeks from now. However, two weeks after the fact of that, I would probably, like this website would probably fall off the cliff and never get to rank number one again, unless I like disavowed all those links, okay? so. If you're really aggressive, if you're really aggressive, like internal, like backlink to internal pages plus the anchors, you can rank really fast. But you just it won't we won't rank very long. Okay, this brand's been around for like over a decade. Okay, they're gonna be around for probably another decade. Okay, yes, I have to get the results early on. However, I want them to continue being a client for a very long time. Okay, so yes, I have to be aggressive to get results early. I'm also not gonna shoot them in the foot by being you know totally you're responsible for how I build links, okay? So I built homepage and collection page links at a ratio of probably like three or four to one. So for every like three to four homepage links I built, I was able to build one internal link to, a, to a, uh, or one backlink to an internal page being a collection page, okay? As far as I'm aware, uh, uh, what I can recall, we didn't build any blog links, mostly because they weren't my blogs and honestly, they weren't very high traffic. Blog links are something else you could do. I know a lot of people do that. Basically, you just like build into a blog, and you just use internal links to kind of distribute that around, right? It can work really well as well. We do it on other brands. It just wasn't the right fit for this brand, right? And that kind of goes into our whole philosophy about like at our agency about every single brand requires something different, right? Yes, the principles stay the same, but every brand has different amount of products, collections, blog content, different amount of backlinks, all these kinds of things. So we have to tailor, you know, our content strategies, our internal linking strategies, and our backlink building strategies to the brand and what we were kind of presented with at start, right? Now, fast forward a year, ideally, if we're, just, if we're still doing SEO, the brand looks a lot more how we'd prefer it to look from an SEO perspective. Then around that timeline, we can change our strategy. If we can be more aggressive, we can go with more internal pages on backlinks, things of that nature, okay? Um, but when we're getting started, we wanna be conservative, we wanna make sure what we're doing is right. And then once we've kind of validated the idea early on, then we can scale it, okay? So you got a brand that's been around for a while and you can't seem to crack SEO, my advice to you, Build, turn collections into collections plus sub collections, build internal links between them, and be a bit more aggressive on um, backlinks to internal pages. See you guys tomorrow.